Welcome, everybody. Uh, it's a great pleasure to have you all here for our Pattern Recognition Symposium. And I have a couple of announcements to start with. So we have in total 39 uh, public talks. So I'm very proud to see that. Uh, we, have, we plan to have three keynotes. So actually, we are down to two keynotes now because one of our keynote speakers is sick. But we were planning to uh, have Professor Laura Schreiber here from University Clinic Würzburg, um, Professor Moritz Zeiss from University Clinic uh, Erlangen, and also Leonardo Impet, who is from uh, Bibliotheca Herzina in Rome. And this is actually uh, the, uh, part of the Max Planck Institute for Kunstgeschichte. So, um, it's really nice that we have medicine and art and from the respective fields keynote speakers. And um, it's actually a really great occasion to get to know the entire work of the lab. And if you're, uh, so this is really, if you're new and if you don't know what we're doing, it's really a great occasion to get a good overview on what's happening here. And what's new is that we are recording talks. So. We're recording the talks. The camera is right over there. And you have this form. So we record the talk. And then you, after the talk, you fill this form. And in this form, you can, of course, give the title, presentation, speaker, and so on. And here you can uh, assign whether you want to have the recording published or not. So essentially, you can say, I don't want any of the recording choices. Then the recording will simply be deleted. There's the choice that the recording can be made accessible via password. Then it's only essentially internal for the lab. And then there's also the choice that it can be posted on the video portal with public access. Then really everybody can see it. And there's even the option uh, that we can upload it to YouTube. And then it's really visible to the rest of the world. So I hope you make uh, use of this option. Of course, not all of the 39 talks. Uh, have to be published on YouTube or something like that. But if you're really satisfied with your presentation, then, uh, I mean, you prepare all of these talks, and it would be great to also present them to a wider audience. But of course, only if you agree and if you are satisfied. Uh, don't cross, I want to have it on YouTube if you don't think it was a good presentation. And then we'll just delete it. Only if yourself are satisfied, uh, we will actually publish it. Okay, so I also brought a couple of slides, and uh, this time I don't want to show uh, something that has been going on in, in research of the lab, but I want to show something that we did in a, in a seminar, and this is actually the seminar that we have Monday at 8 o'clock in the morning, um, actually in Kollegian House together with the president. And this seminar, we were working towards gamification. You know, we have this problem that we, for deep learning, machine learning, we need huge amounts of annotation. And in particular, in medical data, it's really hard to obtain those. So we started data donors to get data donation, and we have the permission for crowdsourcing. But of course, these data somehow need labels. And the task of the seminar was to create methods for actually annotating the data. And I just want to show what kind of ideas the students came up with. So the first uh, result here is ScanRacer. This was done by Jessica Diem, uh, Robert Hermann, Tobias Pattelwieser, and uh, Wei Cheng Lai. And they design designed a game uh, where you are annotating CT images. But you're not just annotating CT images. Uh, you try to get the best segmentation line. And the approach is that you wrap it into a racing game. So you something similar to Mario Kart, maybe. And then you get high scores the closer you follow the boundary. And they, you can get the score by extracting the gradient of the image. So there's like a very weak annotation that gives you the opportunity to calculate the score. And of course, just racing around uh, gradient borders is a bit boring. So there's also obstacles, and you have the, uh, some lives um, that you should stay alive during the game. So this is then how a stage looks like. This, so this is a CT slice here. The task is segmenting the lung. So you're starting on one point of the border. And then you are driving essentially this contour. And in order to guide you, there's a couple of checkpoints that you approximately uh, follow the right contour so that you don't get entirely lost. So control is done by a gyroscope in, in the cell phone. Yeah? So this is a mobile app. And uh, then you can essentially accelerate, decelerate, and you try to closely follow the contour. 
And yeah, this is difficult uh, to imagine what's actually happened, so I have a small in-game video. And you can see that uh, this is one of the creators of the game playing, uh, that actually with the gyroscope you can do quite fast movements and you can follow the, the organ contour quite accurately. So I'm, I'm surprised to see this. Okay, here the player went too far, so maybe we need some additional... Um, some additional game elements that would help you slow down and follow the contour more closely at this point. But uh, at the end of the stage you get a score, there's also a high score a leaderboard, and you see this is the contour that has been done uh, by driving around here. So I found that a very interesting idea. It's of course not the a final game that we could say, okay, uh, now everybody uh, should play this. But I think the game elements are, are pretty nice, and this could be really an option that would bring a lot of players really annotating data, segmenting organs, and so on. There's also a second game that emerged, and it's called Audience Eye. And in Audience Eye, they, uh, group members were, were uh, Qi, uh, Jingna, Wang, Jia Wei, Fan Fusin, uh, Valianos uh, Stelika, uh, and um, Mohammed Farouk, and what they did, they created a game for annotating eye diseases. So there's a public data set available that has more than 7,000 images of different eye diseases, and you can essentially download this data set and use it for classification tasks. And based on this grand challenge, so this is the Odira 2019 grand challenge data, they came up with designing a game, and of course there's a story. So background story is uh, that Odin, uh, a god of Norse uh, mythology, he exchanged an eye for insight, and uh, now he lost his eye, and of some, somehow he wants to get his eye back. So we have this uh, wonderful storyline that we not further comment on. And of course there's also a leaderboard uh, that is posted in Valhalla and of course you want to have the top score on this leaderboard because you want to have your name in Valhalla. Yeah? So uh, they made this uh, with Unity and uh, I found that there, or I observed that there's quite a lot of assets already in the Unity game store. So the background here and also the menu is actually something that you um, yet you can already get as assets, then they have this menu structure here, and there's difficult game modes, there's the normal mode, and normal mode, uh, the idea is that you should get acquainted with the diseases and the fundus images, so they show one fundus image and you get to select one of the six classes, and if you're correct you get one point. So you have to play this for some time, and uh, you have three lives, there's a score that's accumulated, and when you have enough points, so you somehow understood the annotation task, then you can even move ahead to unlabeled mode where you can assign new labels. So, so far, that's very much straightforward. Uh, these new labels can be saved, but they also created a, let's say, difficult mode for experts only, yeah, when you already have a good understanding of the different eye diseases, and they present now many different diseases and what you have to do is to bring three of the diseases in one row, and if you have three in a, in a row, they will disappear. So the principle is very similar to Candy Crush or Zookeeper. And the interesting thing is because you move three symbols in a row, and you know the label of the other two, you can also mix in unlabeled data so that the player will implicitly start labeling. So you can build in like a recapture or capture functionality into such a game. So I found that very, very interesting. And because the game mechanics are really intuitive, it's, it's quite addictive. So they also have the, this curtain here. So gradually when you play the game, the uh, the, the color is reduced, the brightness is reduced, and is gradually moving downward. <laughs> and once the curtain arrives at the very bottom, then your game over. Yeah? So then the game over screen appears, and if you manage to get a couple of um, uh, connections in a very short time, then you get this excellent, and actually uh, the game screen is refreshing. And of course there's this leaderboard where you can then compare your scores to other players and see who was the best player in this game. So, uh, of course, this is also stored uh, from some JSON file, so you can actually also hook this up to the Internet. And uh, they have a complete uh, game development, and if you play the game, I'm really surprised that within the, within the three months of the seminar, they've made this entire game from scratch. Same with the other games. 
and uh, you can actually use it to create labeled data. So, uh, yeah, I found that quite interesting. Right now, there's only six kinds of images in the difficult mode, uh, so there's only six classes, and of course, there's only a limited amount of images right now, so we don't have this um, uh, capture functionality in there right now. Uh, it's just a, a demo of the idea. Still, it's quite interesting, and I have this uh, in-game video here. I thought, okay, I'll just record this. Uh, let's play it for a minute, and then we are good. And uh, this is enough to show the game principles. And you can say you select difficult, and then eventually the game screen pops up. And now we have the different diseases, and you can already see just by color that these uh, six different classes, so healthy and, uh, and pathological, they somehow already emerge and they are visually similar. So it's actually not so hard to play the game and if you play it uh, for, for some time, you really develop an eye for where the different pathologies are and which ones are associated. So I thought, okay, I'll just play this for a minute, but you can see this is me after two minutes, this is me after three minutes, this is me after six minutes, seven minutes, you know. Uh, it's kind of addictive, yeah, so, but then after after ten minutes or something close to the score of, of 240, uh, then also I didn't find enough matches and eventually I didn't find anything anymore and it was game over, yeah. But very nice game design and very cool game mechanics, so uh, I found it really, really great and I wanted to show these results of those two games to everybody here. And uh, that's it. That's all I wanted to say to start PRS. Uh, and let's have a great PRS. Thank you.